this spot. Um, it's a little, little much for our rig. We're gonna see if we can make it work here. We're gonna, we might drag our, you might drag our rear jacks. I don't know if it's worth it. situation we're here in our trailer watching TV we see the Ranger roll by but like I said we talked to the camp host he's like you'll probably be fine to stay there How's it going back there, babe? Gone. I feel rusty. Every time we sit for a while in one spot, I feel rusty. We've been here for like six weeks or so, roughly, and uh, haven't moved the trailer in a while. This is a pretty steep angle we're trying to hitch up at. We are leaving Viacita Lake, and we are heading on down towards maybe Angel Fire, uh, maybe all the way down to Santa Fe. We haven't quite figured it out yet. I'm um, still gonna scout some spots and evaluate the internet speeds once we get down to our next spot because I am officially back to work as of a week and a half ago. So no longer on maternity leave. I'm still, still got the baby sway because we got the sleeping baby right here. <laughs> um, yeah, it's been a great several weeks that we've been here. Uh, really, really nice area up here near Durango and um, it's been really cool where it's been really like hot weather wise everywhere else pretty much um, so up here we've been in pretty high elevation and don't really want to leave but it's getting colder and we've got to move on so you're heading on down to our cleanup in Santa Fe in just a couple weeks here Bit of a tight squeeze, huh? A lot tighter than I thought. Eventually. All right, on to our next adventure. Finally got out of their yard. <laughs> Super grateful. It was it was a little tricky. It's so funny how you pull in somewhere and you're like, oh, that wasn't too bad. It only and took then, like half an hour to get out. Yeah, and then you go to get out and you're like, oh, it's a little trickier than I remember. It's been such a great several weeks up here. Uh, one of the, the challenges of this lifestyle is, you know, finding and spending time with friends. Um, so it's been really, really nice for us to come up here. So thank you, Christina Jameson, for being so welcoming. Huge thanks to them. Make sure you check out their YouTube channel, Perpetual Moves. And it would, the, the timing was, was perfect because we had a lot of issues with our vehicles. We still, I mean, if it seems like the Ram is good to go, the EGR cooler went out. And then currently, as you guys could tell, we're in the same car. Why are we in the same car? Well, just like the transfer case that we had rebuilt, the transmission we had rebuilt, and we lost reverse and overdrive. So, yay, super, fun super cool so it is at a shop in Durango we'll probably loop back through Durango but now we got to go to our cleanup and we got to go to the Albuquerque balloon fiesta and then we'll loop back up here and it is what it is those are the only two things we have planned until Christmas so not terrible
good, we made it. We made it nowhere. We <sighs> basically did a 45 minute to an hour drive to lovely Walmart. We're here at Walmart in Pagosa Springs, beautiful lake across the way. Imagine owning a super nice like million dollar home and then having Walmart across the street. It's kind of funny. Interesting towing again, because it's been about six weeks. Everything seems to be good. We are gonna pull over here, do a little bit of shopping, most likely cook lunch, feed cub, and then we'll be back on the road heading south. It is really strange when you stay in a spot for so long. It feels we're rookies again, basically. All right, let's see how good or bad we packed the trailer. Arr. Like you said, we haven't moved in a little while. You always gotta come in and double check. This catch broke on this door, so I gotta fix that. Seems to be okay. One thing we always, always recommend is try to look behind your slides to make sure nothing fell over there that's gonna obstruct. I can't really look at the other one, so we'll go slide out. And I'm always like crossing my fingers that the slide's gonna work. So I'll do that, bam, pop in there. That one looks good. But then you're gonna wanna come over here just to confirm. Bam, looks good. We're good to go, run her out. Roadside lunch, do you miss it? Do you miss the traveling factor after six weeks? Like Six that. weeks near Vallecito, Colorado. Just always feels good to be back on the road. We're in a beautiful Walmart. But actually, Pagosa is pretty freaking rad. We've been talking about buying land in Durango, but we're not necessarily set on Durango. Um, I was looking at some spots here in Pagosa. Apparently, a lot of full-timers end up buying property here. I think it's uh, you're allowed to be a little more rustic, a little more off-grid. So... Might be an option for us down the road. incredible what a travel day can be like when you don't have two broken vehicles uh, it's been a while since we've had this the Ram seems to be good no more coolant light and obviously we don't have the Jeep right now so it's just the two of us and it's so far it's been good I mean knock on wood we drove through high mountain passes is absolutely beautiful we went to the northern side of Taos New Mexico and now we're going towards Red River New Mexico which is up in the mountains Lincoln how are you doing he's sad here's your pacifier but we should be to camp soon I'm excited it looks beautiful just don't hit the guardrail Okay, do you think we can do this? This spot, a little, little much for our rig. We're gonna see if we can make it work here. We're gonna, we might drag our, you might drag our rear jacks. I don't know if it's worth it. Yeah, let's just go to the lower one. So just back up kind of the way you came in. Don't hit the guardrail. Sometimes you win some, sometimes you lose some. We we're about to delete our rear jack, so I decided to say no on this one a little much keep coming this spot is a little more adequate for the size of our rig we were trying to do some overlanding this boondocking spot was located just one mile north of mallet canyon north of red river new mexico the only internet that worked here whatsoever was Starlink. We were slightly nervous in the beginning to rely fully on Starlink, but we gave it a try and it seemed to work pretty well. Here's a little clip of the coverage maps. All right guys, so we made it to the town of 
Red River, New Mexico. It's a short 1.5 mile drive from our camp, right down the canyon, and it drops you right in the center of their little strip. So today we're gonna explore, probably get some food, probably get some coffee, kind of our typical thing with Lincoln here. We're excited. This town seems very cool. I feel like we say that about every town. There's a lot of cool towns, guys. You gotta explore. Melissa's getting her little wrap chingadera set up for Lincoln. It's like this cloth thing that she like wraps around and gets him all situated in there. It's kind of complicated, but it's really comfortable once it's on. I hate it, I hate it. Just give me the one with the clips. I'm quick, it's easy, it's done. It's a process, guys. So this is becoming a trend. We have been spending more and more money lately when we're out on the town because I think we're, we feel like we can do slightly less activities because we have Lincoln, more like extreme things. So we just like walk around downtowns, get coffee, get food and buy stuff. <laughs> we try not to buy stuff for ourselves obviously because we live in a trailer, yes. but we did get Lincoln his very first wooden truck. Oh my god, it's a flatbed. So Melissa's trying to tell me that we can get a flatbed on the Ram. That's what she's trying to tell me. It was between a Jeep, a flatbed, or a helicopter. And she's like, I like the flatbed. I like the flatbed. And I was like, okay, cool. That means we need one on the Ram. It's got like cool color contrasts. And these are made by local artists. Um, in Cuesta. Cuesta. So we're in Red River, yeah. So the next town over. And uh, obviously it's like handmade uh, with wood materials and then they use like a non-toxic oil to seal it. Um, so basically he could stick it in his mouth and be fine. And this place is called Bear Xing, I believe. It's right here on the main drag in Red River. It's one of the first stops we made today. And we got my- like this sweet wooden dish, like uh, a key dish. Like a key dish for my brother because we missed his birthday. And it doesn't really matter that we're showing this right now because he doesn't watch our videos, so. <laughs> so he won't even see this. No, he won't, but he will get this in the mail in a couple of weeks. Yeah, so, first stop, stop number one, $20 in the hole. to steam coffee co for our obligatory afternoon coffee and you know I decided to splurge and get a super sugary peach pie muffin because it's made by a local baker and this is one of the coolest coffee shops we've been to in a while because it's in a, it's in a train car how cool is that reminds me of the boxcar children yeah this thing is awesome if you know you know <laughs> the service was great too definitely stop by steam coffee co if you're in Red River <laughs> We went to Red River Brewing. It was good, the atmosphere was very nice. I imagine the beer is very good. We don't drink beer. I mean, it's a brewery. But the food was good mm -hmm. and the service was great. We actually met a full-time RVer that had recently moved here from Georgia. And her husband works in the mine out here. Yeah, there's a, a big mine that I think Chevron bought, right? and uh, they're restoring the mine and the mountain back to make it look like a normal mountain again. That's the goal. And all of the mountains out here actually remind us a lot of Yellowstone National Park because the stone is actually yellow. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's kind of weird. It's really cool. It's, really, it's a really pretty town. Small, seems like mostly like a vacation kind of a town, but it's really cool. We 
they do have a pretty good market we we always go in to the markets and just do a hot lap to scope it out because most likely the tail end of this week i'll have to go in there and get some vegetables you know we just don't have the space to stock up too much stuff so good good tip market's good and you should always do a hot lap even if you don't need anything right now just go in and just you know right hot lap i can't whistle but yeah, yeah, one of those. We're back to this camera now. So my microphone on my Pixel is just not working and it sounds like poo poo. So we're back to the Sony, which is really annoying because it's big and bulky and having this bear cub makes it hard to remember to charge another thing, to bring another thing, all that to if anyone has any good solutions for a microphone uh, USB-C that will actually work with my phone. I don't know if it's my phone or my mic. Let me know in the comments because I've gone through many and I'm getting quite frustrated. Yes. Anyway, so in today's video, I'm going to be hitching up the trailer. Jesse's going to be advising me because I do drive often. Um, I tow the trailer, I do the whole walk around, you know, visual, all that stuff. But I've never actually hitched up, broken down the trailer all on my own. Jesse usually jumps in to help out with a large part of that. So yep. if I ever had to do it myself, I probably wouldn't know what to do. So, so yeah. So that's the whole point of this video today. Uh, he's going to stand back and advise me and I'm going to actually do everything from start to finish. I'm going to point. I'm just going to point. Me and me and Cobb are going to just point and yeah. advise. Yes. Inside. Obviously, you want to sweep your floors, make sure all your doors are latched, all the windows are closed, all the roof vents are closed. Yep. And then once that's all good, you bring your slide in. Okay, let's do that. Light off, water pump off, bringing the slide in. So today, our plan is obviously to hitch up, show you all that, get Melissa acquainted with hitching up the truck and trailer. And then we are going to be going from Red River, where we are, south. I forget the name of the highway, but it's called the Enchanted Circle towards Angel Fire. We plan on checking out Angel Fire. And eventually, we may end up near Angel Fire for the night or near Santa Fe, where we're going to be doing our cleanup. It all just depends how the day goes. Also, a little update on Starlink. We worked fully off Starlink um, this week, and it worked great. Speeds were great. We did have a couple outages, but it never really affected our streaming or our video calls. So there you go. Yes, it is quite expensive to have, but for us, we consider that a necessary expense. Now what we want to do is we want to remove our max chocks and bring our stabilizers up. Yep, you need to impact. So you you're going to get rid out. of that screw because we don't need that. This. And you need, this? yep, that's for the uh, max chocks. Okay. And then there's another size in there for, for the... the jacks. Okay. I'm always looking as I'm going, just making sure like our awnings in, everything looks good. You're for sure gonna do a full walk around like you typically do. We got a little pine leaf up there. Yeah. <laughs> That's from Perpetual Moose's house, Kristen and Jameson. And then obviously we got our front levelers. These go in here? Yeah, I like to keep those orange blocks right here in the camper shell. What's cool about making this video is that if I ever have to do this completely by myself in the future and I don't remember all of the steps in the right order, I have the video to watch. Okay, now I'm swapping out the drill for this big socket and wrench. Ratchet. Ratchet. So you're gonna wanna unlock the hitch here and basically the next step is gonna be to raise the front of the trailer all the way up. All Open right, so the- I took, my, I took my lock off of here, lift this, pull it back. Yep, and it stays open. So now the catch is open. Okay. Set the lock down. You don't need that right now. Well, not on the ground. Oh. There you go, perfect. <laughs> all right, and I want everyone to note that oh they're not on this side it's chalk still basically oh. the trailer is still chalked on the other side um you always want to keep it chalked because now we're going to be raising the front of the trailer technically it could roll away so the chocks are on the other side so you don't remove the chocks till the very very end both of them right you remove both, both of them yeah you should always have one front and back at a minimum i mean even 
though I know we're going up like this, you still, always you want never it. Know it could if roll it starts forward. rolling, you're 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 gonzo. Yeah, that'd be trouble. Okay. So raise. So now raise this with this button. Yep. Extend. Turn it on. Nope, that's for the light. Oh. Extend. Okay. So just extend. Okay. So now that you're looking at your height of your ball to your coupler. I feel like it needs to go up a little more. Yeah, you're always better off being a little bit higher so you can get out of the truck less. And this is one thing that's always a pain when you do it by yourself is you're getting in and out of the truck a million times. That looks like plenty. Okay. All right, so now you're basically gonna back up. You have a backup camera. Make sure it's clean. You're just looking at the ball, lining it up with right here. We need more paint. Typically, I had a white line on there. I'll do a big dot so it's easier to see in the camera. Okay. Eventually. So chains. now you gotta attach your chains. Okay. You gotta get your plate from Anderson on, um, cause that's our weight distribution hitch. But go ahead and do your power cord, do your breakaway safety. Just get as much stuff hitched up as possible. Okay, so power cord. Power cord. That's the correct way, up. Six. Push it in all the way, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Make sure this catches, cool. Okay, breakaway. Breakaway. Which goes on the, the bottom. Over here. Over here. Okay. Uh, now you gotta try and get your Anderson plate on. So grab this plate. Yep, that plate. Pick it up. Pull that in out. Pull that shank out. Wait, pull pull the pin. Oh. Now that needs to go up. Here? Yep. Line up the holes. And then once you get it lined up all the way, that pin should go in that way. And the reason I like doing it like that is so that you can see the safety pin when you're doing it yourself. Yep, wiggle and push. Wiggle, push, wiggle, push. Wiggle, push. Wiggle, push. Yay. Now okay, that she's got the pin in, now we're gonna set up the weight distribution. So obviously a lot of the weight of the trailer is down on the truck right now. So now you're gonna raise the jack. What we're doing is we're distributing the weight. So once it's up, you can feel this, you can watch in there. Once the tension is off, that's probably good. Now you need to tighten up these chingaderas down here with so the ratchet. Which side do first. Nope, they both need to be tight. So what she's doing now is similar to doing your spring bars on a conventional hitch. Instead of doing the spring bars, we are basically just tightening the chains down until they're very firm. Okay, so you want that firm, and then what's gonna happen is when you lower the jack, these are gonna get even tighter, distributing the weight even more. All right, so now add your safety chains. Don't forget those. And you just go under yep. here. A lot of people say you should cross them. I don't know if that's baloney or not. So this would come, this would come to this side. Oh. I don't know if that's true or not, but something I heard on the internet. I don't know if I trust it. Now you can bring your trailer all the way down and we want to show them, look. See how there's a little give there? Yeah. When we drop the trailer, it's going to be tight. It's going to get, it's getting tighter as it's going down right now. Tight. So tight. Tight like a tiger. Now check the other side, make sure it's similar tightness. What's next? Pull out the aux blocks. Yep, I'll take that. Um, okay, so the next... Pop quiz, two more steps. So obviously close that. Uh, yeah, that's kind of part of the second step. Make sure the tow haul mode is on. Yep, and? Exhaust brake. And? Pull your chocks out. Oh! <laughs> so that would probably be my next step, was pull my chocks, do a walk around as I'm pulling my chocks out, and then uh, you'll be good to go. You know what's funny is, that one's stuck, so I'm gonna yeah. have to pull forward a little bit, is normally I do this step all on my own, but it's one of the only steps that I'm responsible for. So, here we go. So, unfortunately, we're getting kicked out. 